Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know about accommodation in the UK. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. I share tips around relocating with children, my lifestyle in the UK, and everything that I do to improve my life as a black person residing in the UK. If this sounds like something that you've been looking for on YouTube, please stick with me. in the UK is a difficult aspect of relocation you will have to face. Depending on the time of your stay, the number of people living with you and your budget, you will have to decide whether you want a long-term rental or a short-term rental, whether you want a furnished or an unfurnished apartment, whether you want a house or you want a flat. If you're staying long enough, you might even consider buying a house. How about that? In the UK, there are many different types of houses such as detached, semi-detached, terraces, cottages, end of terrace, just name it. There are so many different ones and you have all of these options depending on your budget, the number of people that are living with you and the area that you are looking to rent a place in. Prices of these houses would also vary depending on the city that you're considering, the area you're looking at, and the type of house you eventually settle for. There are two different types of rentals, like I mentioned earlier, the short-term rentals and the long-term rentals. With short-term rentals, you can find them on several platforms such as Booking.com, Airbnb, Homestay, TripAdvisor, etc. Apartments for short-term rent are usually easy to secure and most of them come furnished. One of the reasons why you may want to consider a short-term rental is maybe because the items that you ship from Nigeria or from wherever hasn't arrived so you're waiting for your shit item to come or secondly, you are looking at renting a place but you want to take your time to find a good place for yourself and your family because moving about from one house to another is not the easiest thing out here. So you may consider those short-term apartments for a really short period while you are still looking for the befitting apartment for you and your family. Another place you can consider to find short-term rental is places like Gumtree, Facebook Market, Facebook Groups, etc. But this is a caveat. A lot of those groups come with a lot of risk because so many people are subletting their apartments illegally. For example, People let out their apartment when they are going on holiday for a short period, even though their letting agreement says they cannot do so. I just thought I'll mention that to you so you know. Just in case you find yourself in that sort of situation, you should have a plan. Still on short-term rentals. If you're wondering what document do you need to rent a place on a short-term basis, you usually don't need more than your government ID or maybe a verified account on whatever platform you're considering. For example, if you're looking for a short-term apartment on Airbnb, whoever it is that is renting to you would want to ensure that you have a verified account on Airbnb to give them also some sort of security. So basically what you need is your government ID and a verified account on whatever platform you choose to find your short-term apartment. Now, on to renting a house or a long-term rental. Knowing how to rent a house in the UK is very essential. Although a large amount of rental properties are available, right? But the market has huge variation in terms of the prices, which is also determined by city, location, area, and all of those factors. For example, properties in London, the same size, the same dimension, can be like 10 times more expensive than in Milton Keynes where I live. Renting in the UK as a foreigner, maybe like an international student or somebody who has moved you on a tier 2 visa is a different ball game. You'll probably be unfamiliar with the system and you have to consider different factors when deciding where to live. Factors such as length of stay in the country, type of house you're interested in, your budget, commute whether to your school or to your job, schools in the area. All of those things that would affect your everyday life are things that you really need to put into consideration when deciding where to live. Depending on how long you're going to be in the UK for, renting will give you the flexibility and ease to test out different places in case you don't find a place that suits your interest or suits your requirements in your first search or in your first choice. If you're planning to relocate to the UK and you're wondering right now, can I start to search for houses in the UK from abroad? My answer to you is yes. You can actually start searching websites now from abroad, looking at different websites and different possibilities, different kind of houses, different budgets. This gives you an opportunity to make a better and informed decision when you finally arrive in the UK. Because a lot of landlords may not want to give you the house 
while you are abroad until they see you physically. It is important to equip yourself with the right information that would enable you to make the right decision when you finally arrive in the UK. With rental properties in the UK, the landlords are responsible for most of the upkeep of the property. They have a legal duty of care to ensure that the property is held up and looked after to a certain standard that makes life comfortable for you while you are their tenant. The landlords in this case, they are responsible for repairs to the structure and exteriors of the property. So for example, the walls, the windows, doors, any major repair that needs to be done in the house is the landlord's responsibility, which is part of the reason why when you make any change, when you want to make any change or you make any change to their house, they will say to you that when you're returning the property to them, you must give them the property back the way it was given to you in the first place. Average rent in the UK. If you are wondering what is the average rent in the UK, for example, right now, it's about £1,700 in London, which is way higher than the national average of £1,000. In Milton Keynes, where I live, the same house that you pay about £1,700 for in London, you probably be paying like half of that or maybe 1000 So like I said before, it depends on the region or the city that you have chosen to live or maybe the city where your job is or the city where your school is situated. It's going to decide or determine how much you pay as rent. Also, a furnished house or a furnished flat can cost up to 20 to 30% more than an unfurnished one because white goods they provide furnitures and you do not have to worry about buying any of those things. They kind of find a way to include that cost in the rent that you're going to pay. That forms part of the factors you consider when making your decision whether to go for a furnished or an unfurnished house. Places to look for houses. There are so many websites that you can check in the UK when you're looking for accommodation. One half of them is regulated and there's some level of security provided by using those apps. The other half is not regulated and they are very prone to scam and all kinds of unregulated behavior. Now, the ones that are registered and regulated are Zoopla, Rightmove, Open Rent, and On The Market. There may be other ones, but those are the four that I'm familiar with and I have used and I feel safe using them. Now, with the ones that are not regulated, you want to look at places like Gumtree, Facebook Groups, Facebook Market, Spare Room, Room Body. There are quite a number of them. Especially also, the reason why you may want to consider the ones that are not very regulated is when you're looking for a room in a house or you want to share houses with people, you want, you know, you can't take the entire three bedroom by yourself. Maybe you're a student, you're just wondering, I don't want a whole house like Zoopla and Right Move we offering. You then consider spare room, ideal flatmates, room bodies, um, gum tree, Facebook groups, Facebook market. But you have to be very careful on those sites. You have to be very careful on those platforms because nobody's regulating anything. People have all kinds of behavior on those platforms. So you want to bear that in mind when you're making your decision about considering those unregulated platforms. Now, onto the rental process and rules. Once you've found a place, the next thing for you to do is to sign a contract. Most contracts initially will be for one year. After that one year, then they will revert to a periodic one where they then ask you, do you want it to be six months or do you want it to be three months, depending on your discussion or whatever arrangement you have with your agency. At the end of each contract, whether the first one year or the periodic ones, you'll be asked whether you want to extend your stay or you want to leave. Usually, the agent or the landlord will require that you give them a two-month pre-notice if you're going to be leaving. For example, if you're going to be moving out in December, by October, you need to have told your landlord because it takes them a while to find a new tenant. So they can start to pull word out. Then they will bring people into your house to do like viewings and all of that. So by the time you're leaving, they already have a waiting tenant. After this, you sign your contract. Ensure that you read your contract properly so that you're not tying yourself into something that you're not happy about. For example, maybe something happens around the house or maybe you find out along the line that the landlord has some sort of untold behavior and you want to move. Don't lock yourself into a contract that doesn't allow you to move maybe halfway or doesn't allow you to exercise your full right as a tenant. You want to read the fine writings properly. Also, just to mention that after signing, you would also be asked to pay a security deposit. Depending on your agent or the landlord, the amount may vary. For most, it's usually an equivalent of one month rent or five weeks rent, depending on your own agent. My own agent asked me to pay five weeks equivalent, which was what I did. Also, 
The following documents may be required of you. For example, your proof of ID, your proof of employment and funds. At least they need to be sure that you are able to pay them. Your work permit or your student visa or whatever it is that permits you to be in the UK. If you are employed, they can ask you for a letter from your employer or just something that shows how much you're earning. One thing I also want to mention is that because of affordability, these days, especially in Mr. Kids, I don't know how it happens everywhere else, these landlords say they want somebody who earns a certain amount of money because they're looking at your ability to be able to pay that rent conveniently and not give them any stress about their payment. So they would ask you for how much you earn and they would try and confirm that whether with your employer, I don't know how they do it, but they asked me to provide a proof of how much I was earning, my employer's letter, so that they know that I'm able to afford the rent of my current accommodation. Other things that they may ask include references from previous landlord or previous contact. Depending on if you're just coming from abroad, I've heard recently that some landlords, because of they want to be secure, they are asking people to pay six months rent in advance, just so that they feel safe that you're able to pay. If that is something that you can afford and you really like the house, I mean, it's okay for you to pay that amount of money because first of all, the next six months, you're not worrying about paying rent, especially if you're dealing with somebody from those regulated and registered platforms like Zoopla, On The Move, um, Right Move, On The Market. On those platforms, you can pay them six months ahead just to give the landlord some form of security and comfort that you know what you will not give them any problem after providing all of the documents and information depending on the agency it might take them a while because they will send this out for credit check i don't know about any other person but my own agent they did my credit check they did every single thing they needed to do to give them comfort that i would be able to pay them their money and i would not give them any stress they reached out to our previous landlord just to find out about my character you know what kind of person i was after all of their checks they, they reached out back to me and they sent me the final contract i read through the contract basically the contract should show you the address of where you're living the name of your landlord your own name if you're sharing the house with your husband your name and your husband's name your address and then it will list out all of your rights and responsibilities as tenant their own rights and responsibilities as the landlord and then it will also list how much you paid as deposit, the condition with which your deposit will be returned. For most landlords, if you do any structural change to their property without their consent, and by consent I mean written consent, they expect that you fix it and give them back their property how they gave it to you. So when you take ownership or you know, receive your keys from the landlord or from the agent, one thing you want to do is to make sure that you have an idea of how the property was given to you. I know some of them would do some sort of like inventory check or something like that, but you also need to take your own records so that when you're giving them back their property, they're not telling you that they can't return your money because really your deposit is supposed to be with them till when you're leaving. When you're leaving, they come and check their house. They are happy with it. You sign off, they sign off, and then they refund you back your security deposit. A lot of people don't get back their deposit because of how maybe they change things. If you're not aware, these are the things that you can fall prey to. The contract would also feature things like when your rent starts to count, the exact date you need to pay every single month, whether they have the right to review and if they need to come back to you before they do a review, what percentage of review can be done. This is the reason why I say you need to read this thing properly because Assuming they put that they can review as much as 20%, as much as 50% or 70%, that is unrealistic for you. When they do the review, you can't do anything because you would have signed these contracts. It will also put information around how you can reach them. If you're going to go through their agent or you're going to go through the directly, there's a number they want you to reach for repairs. My own agency, they have a website that they use for contractors and repairs. So they put all of that information in there to say, if you have any issues, this is the outline this is the number you can reach on public holidays all of this information should be included in the rental agreement the rental agreement would also contain specific information around who is responsible for what type of repairs so that you don't end up fixing the house where the landlord is supposed to be responsible if that happens most times you don't get your money back before you move in make sure you make an inventory of what the house looks like as detailed as the rugs by rug i mean the carpet I made a proper video of my house before I brought in any single item. I mentioned earlier that they usually would have somebody do their own inventory, but I also, I mean, we see things differently. I need to have a picture of what the house looks like before they give me so that they can also factor in wear and tear after the period that may have lived in the house. 
I've known a lot of people who lost their deposit because they didn't have a picture of how the house looked when they moved in. And then the landlord and agents came in and then, you know, the story was different. It was their word against theirs and they couldn't get their deposit back. I needed to protect myself. So you also should consider doing that before you put anything in that property. The tenant's rights. As a tenant, you also have rights and responsibilities. When you rent privately, you have a right to live in a place that is safe, that is convenient and private. And also, you have a right to be protected from unfair eviction and unfair hike in price. In turn, you have the responsibility to look after the property and pay the landlord their rent as that when due, without any tussle or force. If you're not sure about your tenant right and you really want to familiarize yourself with it, I would find a document and link the legal documents and rights of a tenant at the bottom of this video. You may want to familiarize yourself with that. Paying for utilities as a tenant. Depending on the type of house or the type of arrangement you have with your landlord, some landlords have their rent all inclusive, such that your bills for light, water, and all of that is already included in the rent that you pay them, so you don't have to worry about it. But in the case where you are responsible for your own utility bill, by utilities I mean gas, light, electricity, whatever other things that you have to pay around your area, you have to make sure that you pay those. If it is paid to the landlord, it's nothing for you to worry about. And you want to consider whether it is included in your rent or you have to also pay it by yourself when you're deciding what budget you want to pay for the house. Because sometimes after paying rent, some people assume that the landlord will be responsible to provide them light, water and all of that, which is not usually the case. So you want to consider it. if somebody is offering you a certain amount of rent, ask them, is this inclusive of my utilities or is this outside of it? If it is outside, then you might want to rethink your budget and say, you know, this may not work for me, depending on what your earning power is. That is it for this video about what you need to know about accommodation in the UK. I hope you find this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so that I know that you like content like this and I can create more for your consumption. If you're a first time subscriber, you're welcome. Please consider subscribing, join the family. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey thank you for coming back if you have any suggestions or things that you want me to talk about in relocation or living in the uk settling in the uk with children i am more than happy to answer my email address will be somewhere in the description box down below feel free to send me an email and i will be more than happy to create a video for your consumption if you know anyone who will find this video or my entire relocation series useful please share it with them you'll be doing them a lot of good until next time thank you so much for watching Bye everyone.